the show starts in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Whether you're new to sales or a lifetime veteran, the Black Belt Sales Podcast will sharpen your sword and guide you to master the art of sales. And now, here's your host, the ninja himself, Gene Slade. Welcome back to the Black Belt Sales Podcast. This morning, we're talking about financing options, which ones you should use and which ones you shouldn't, and why you should not lead with 0% interest financing. I've got my main man, Don Johnson, in the booth with me. Good morning, Don. Good morning, Gene. Yeah, it's a good subject because people, owners, managers, don't know which ones to put out there. Sometimes the corporate grab all the ones that uh, are like really low cost and free, but yet doesn't lend to the sales process. I believe there's a blend of the two. You want ones that fit into your sales process, but you also don't want to just be giving all your money to the finance company. Why should they make as much as you make just by offering, you know, by you giving them as a, as a fine, as a choice, I guess. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of questions that come out of the which finance a lot of times you get which finance company well there's so many out there don't know that we need that subject today but which finance choice is a good choice today i'd also like to know what finance companies you guys are having success with out there right now so if you if you're using a finance company that you like please put it down in the comments and also if you're watching live go ahead and put live in the comments please and if you're watching replay Please put replay in the comments. So, Don, which uh, I have my own favorite plans that I use, one in particular. But um, which were your favorite plans over at your company? Well, I always wanted to make sure we had two that are go-to. And I wanted the fees to the company to be reasonable. All right, I'll say what reasonable to me is about 3%, somewhere in the credit card. Yeah, I think fees are starting to go up. Maybe they get to 4%. But I was always looking for something that was just like a credit card in terms of fees to the company, 3% range. And we would utilize some, some of the free plans for a while. Some of that has, has gone away. But the two options I always wanted to have was a no payment for six months and then one that had a very low payment factor and i often get people say well i don't what's a payment factor and we have to kind of go through a payment factor nowadays years ago payment factor was the first thing that the companies kind of led with to give you but now they say it's all in the computer and they won't even give you the payment factors very well and very easily anymore uh, and you have to kind of figure them out but payment fact a low payment factor so that i could get a low payment for our clients so those are the two i wanted me too. Exact same ones. I liked having a no, uh, a zero interest for six months um, just in case I needed it in my back pocket. But I always led with the low payment factor um, price, or low payment factor monthly investment. And mm-hmm. if you guys don't know what that is, most finance companies have got a revolving line of credit, if you will, or revolving uh, account that will allow you to choose like a 9.9 or 11.99 or 13.99. And they have a very, very low monthly payment. And if you were to just make the monthly payment, I think it's like 12 or 14 years or something like that it takes to get it paid off, right? Now, why would I use that plan, Don? Why would I use that as opposed to something that they could pay off in six years? Well, It gives flexibility to the client that they get to choose that if they have that flexibility. They could always pay more. It's just we wanted a low payment factor. I was looking through some yesterday for for a client of ours, and a 1.25 payment factor was available. So I added that to his his list, Uh, 1.25 payment factor. So what's when you look it up, it says 1.25%. For people, you look at it and say, if you were to have a ten thousand dollar 
sale that they need they were going to do tankless water heater some other projects indoor air quality doesn't matter but ten thousand dollars a 1.25 payment factor 10,000 times on your calculator 0. 0.0125 so I prefer to do it and that'll give you a hundred and twenty five dollars right a hundred and twenty five dollars is the monthly payment now we teach and we talk about, you also want to break that down to weekly. Had a guy this morning talking about he likes to break it down to daily, but I like the weekly breakdown. So how many weeks are in a month, Gene? 4.3. So, yeah, 4.3. You know, that's a lot of people just say four, but it's 4.3. It's 52 weeks a year divided by 12 months. So 4.33 really gives you the, the best mm -hmm. number. So 125 divided by 4.33. Um, I don't have my calculator in front of me right now, but that's going to give us, um, what, a $30 payment range per, per week? $28.87. There you go. So now, when you pick that low payment option, is it easier to talk to clients about $10,000, about $125 a month, or about $28.87 a week? Most people get paid weekly. They think weekly. They perceive their bills and they see how much they have extra weekly. So if you break things down to weekly, it becomes so much easier for people to visualize. And once they visualize it, then they can understand I can do that. Right. So a low payment factor builds that in for us. A 1.25. I've seen some down in the one point. 06, you know, 1%, but some of those would come with maybe a little higher fees. I was pretty happy with this plan for, for this client. We were talking about a 1.25 payment for us. Um, and the fees were a little higher, but reasonable for, for this situation. Now they did have, and it was 9.9%. So you don't have to be out there with the 3.9s, 5.9s, 7.9s. You're not trying to be cheaper than credit unions or nope. banks that's not our area that we're trying to compete against so you don't have to say you know you don't have to be embarrassed with a 9.9 10.9 percent interest rate people are paying far yeah. more than that out there and just don't realize it so and for the record i have had clients that were sitting at the table and they asked me you know gene what's the interest rate on that and mine was at either 11.99 or 9.99. The way you want to respond to that is that's the best part. It's only, and then state the interest rate, right? Mm -hmm. People are wired for cooperation, right? So when I go, well, that's the best part, it's only. Um, most of the time, they're just going to go along with me. However, in some circumstances, they'll go, I get, well, I got a credit card that's cheaper than that. What am I going to say? You want to go ahead and use that then? right yeah okay um, what if they say well what's the term right because you've got it stretched out as the lowest monthly payment possible um what's the term gene that's the best part you can pay it off whenever you want and we've kept the payment super super low on a monthly basis just in case there's ever a cash flow challenge right so that's the best part Right. You guys can right. take something that they're going to make negative and turn it into something that's positive that you can get cooperation on. Exactly. So. And there are people who have 24 or 25 percent credit cards. There are utility companies that are 16 to 19 percent interest rate that they charge and they put it on your bill. So having a nine or 10 percent number um, it, it is really plenty you don't have to be offering zeros as you said earlier to be competitive yes there are plenty of guys in the markets that are zero percent interest rate um advertising and you know what that to me i've done some i'm not but to me if if you have to have zero percent as your only tool you're kind of desperate yeah there. you are selling based on price based on price. And that is a big, big problem, right? So th that kind of takes me to why you shouldn't offer zero interest programs, right? And you kind of touched on it earlier, Don, and that is that number one, the bank is just raking in the dough on that. If they're already making a, let's say a 18 or a 20% interest rate on their money, why should we have to give them 
19% for a 60 month, no interest program. It's just absolutely insane. That's more than most contractors net profit, right? Right. Would you, and if you're yeah. using that as a crutch to make sales, I'm here to tell you, you're shooting yourself in the foot. And unfortunately you don't have a very high skill set when it comes to sales. And I'll prove it to you right now. Your price is $5,000 higher. Why should I buy from you? If you can give me 10 really good reasons why you should, you know, somebody should buy from you, then I retract my statement. Otherwise, you might want to get some help on handling the price objection because it's actually the easiest objection to handle. Well, and you'll hear from guys, everybody in my market offers zero for 60, 48, 60, 72s out there. there. So I have to. No, you don't have to. You don't have to do that. So, um, you just got to yeah, justify I, your price and, and all that other stuff. Guys, I promise you don't have to. If you have struggles with that and you need help with that, hit me up on my cell. All right. Shoot me a text and I'll spend a little bit of time with you and I will give you some help on that. All right. So my text uh, is on the screen for those of you that are listening on Spotify or Apple. It's 239-848-6533. Okay. 239-848-6533. Just shoot me a text. Let me know who you are. And uh, talk to me about this conversation that we're having here, and I'll set up some time to help you. Now, Don, Philip here was talking about, and it's simple interest, and explain what that means. I've got something to say about that, but why don't you share with us what simple interest is, Don? Well, um, you know, getting into too many bank terms with, you know, compound interest, simple interest, and in terms like that often means we're trying to over explain things anyway but simple interest is is as you as you said it's just take the number comp multiply it by that that is the number compounding it says one if i said it, you were 9.9 percent compound interest well it's going to compound that every day calculate it every day and by the end of the year you're paying interest on the interest on the interest on the interest, it'll actually work out to be a little bit higher. Simple interest is you're paying the interest of the number quoted versus compound interest that they're charging you the interest before you. And and then really before they even send you a statement, they're just assuming the interest and then charging the interest on the interest every day. So that's a compounding. So I think that's where he means. uh, And simple, I like he put up there, no prepayment for early payoff. That's the best part. You can pay it off anytime you want. Uh, I think the last time I read one of the studies that the average life of a loan in our kind of our industry or our our segment of the market is like 39 months. Even when they take out the zeros for 60s and even when they take out the the 10 years, the average loan that that our, you know, our, our finance companies give actually turns out to be only about 39 months. So I would, three and a half, I, three and a half years, maybe is about all it takes for people to pay these off. Uh, something happens in their life. They get a bonus. They put it towards it. That's the best part. You can pay anything you, anything you want to, to that amount. And there's no early prepayment penalty. And I want to caution you guys about saying too much. Okay. Have you guys ever talked your way out of a sale? I would be very, very careful about getting into the weeds, uh, Philip. Uh, And I know that you probably do on a regular basis and it works out okay for you. I would just be very, very careful about getting into the weeds, about explaining the different types of interest and everything. I've never, ever had a deal that I lost because I couldn't explain to a customer what simple interest or compound interest was, right? Right. And frankly, um, I'm just going to be transparent with you. I couldn't have given you the definition. That's why I ex- asked Don to explain it because he's got a financial background, right? So you don't have to know that in order to make sales out there. And sometimes we talk just a little bit too much, and it's the easiest way to talk your way out of a sale, guys, is to give somebody too information, too much information. If they need that information, I promise you they will ask you, and it will probably only be about 2% of the population that you deal with. Right. So and I, just, and- just food for thought out there, Philip, is all. Thank and you I say for your contribution to the show, by the way. Yes, uh, absolutely. I say pick the one that fits this situation and explain it in terms of you know the the situation or the disclosures. And I will say 
I've said this for a while and maybe a little controversial. You do not have to give finance disclosures to all the people who do not apply. Yeah. But yet as salespeople, we start saying 120 months and 9.9% and your monthly payment is uh, one, you know, 125 and the person hasn't even bought from you or even started the applying process. Don't put that cart before the horse, so to speak. Let's wait till they said, yeah, let's go for it. All right. Let me get your information. Let's move forward. Ah, now you're approved. Now you can do the disclosure. And a lot of the disclosures nowadays are done through email from the, from the, um, from the finance company themselves. But try again, a little bit. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. You do not have to give finance disclosures to everyone who does not apply. It's only the people who apply that it that you have to deal with. But yet, as salespeople, we want to over talk and explain all that stuff in the interest rate. That's the best part. Just that's the best part. Let's find out. They'll they'll let us know exactly what those details are. So you get asked for it. Let's you know that's that's the easy part. Let's just find out. They'll let, yeah. they'll let us know. When people ask me what the interest rate is before we run any sort of application, my response is always, um, that's the best part. It's actually completely dependent upon your credit. So it's a great way to get out of it, right? It's completely dependent upon your credit. Let's take a look. So uh, let's bring Don back in the studio. I, I, I can see him there, Brittany. Let's bring him back in. Ta ciao. Perfect. So, um, Again, the good part of that, uh, let's say, because I see this a lot, especially on Service Titan, that they give you six choices. Your company might have had 30 or 40 choices, and somebody in management, the owner, picks six of them. And now you're sitting there with those six, and you just decide, I don't want to make a decision for the customer. I'll just give them all to them, and they can oh, decide. Horrible well, decision. Horrible. Uh, and what happens is you are building in another overwhelming moment and someone to say, well, I need to think about it. I yep. need to figure this out. I, you just pushed me to make another decision and I'm scared I'm going to make the wrong decision. So when I'm scared I'm going to make the wrong decision, I make no decision at all. I That's didn't right. give you a no. I didn't give you a, I just put it in the let me think about it category or let me call my accountant. Have you guys ever experienced bank. this? Have you ever experienced this when you give somebody too many options and they kind of lock up on you? Put it in the comments. Yeah. Deer in the headlights. Kind of like crap. I now have to pick all of these. I don't know which one's going to work best for me. Well, you know what? They probably all will turn out okay. But just explain the one that you you see fits best. And again, the two that, that I feel like fit best is the low payment. You can always pay more. You're not required, but to pay those pay that more but you can always pay it off early there's no no problem with that that's the best part or the second was no payments so it the no payment at all options for six months maybe 12 months your company choice there we would always do six month no payment as a choice for our guys so that we could do i'll get my tax return back and I'll handle it. I'm getting a bonus at the end of the year. I should have the money later kind of situation. So that way you could just simply say, perfect. That's not a problem. We wouldn't even ask you to pay until till then anyway. So I'll take care of it for you today. And, and you just pay us when you get your tax return. So real quick, Don, there, I, I did sometimes use a six month and sometimes a 12 month no interest plan, but I, I, I wouldn't typically go over something that cost me 6%. I was wondering, you know, can I just share with them how I would determine whether or not I was going to put them on some sort of plan like that. Right. And it's, yeah. it all comes down to our payment plan close. So when somebody gives us a stall or a put at put off, and we have created a prioritized list. Um, let's say that they say, hey, I want to think about it, right? I'll go, that's not a problem. Before I take off, is there anything on my list that you feel is overkill or unnecessary? And I'll just cross off whatever they say, right? And then once they've crossed off everything that they want to cross off, I'll go, so you do feel like all the rest of this needs to be done. And you're not just saying that to be nice to me. And I'll go level with me. How do you feel about the money? 
that's usually when they'll say it's a lot of money. And I'll go, um, do you have that much money? <laughs> now, some people say that that's really ballsy. I don't mm. think so. Okay. I just think it's very direct. Plus, I've been there an hour and a half, two hours. I busted my ass doing a great job for them. I feel like I've earned the right to ask them that question. And I've never had anybody say to me, it's none of your business. I've never been kicked out of the house for me saying, do you have that much money? Mm -hmm. That's a great, great question. And some, some of them are so glad to tell you, no, they don't. Because they feel like once I tell them I don't have the money, it's over. Yeah. And embarrassment, there's no embarrassment. It's gone. And yeah. I, the guy can't close me because exactly and their guard drops right so at this stage of the game i'm gonna go when will you have the money they're gonna say i don't know so i'm gonna go take a guess and they'll probably say i don't know again and so i'll go take a guess and usually they'll give me like three months six months 12 months right if they give me a number that's like six months i'll go all right i'll go ahead and take care of it for you and you can pay us when you get the money and i'll just put them on a six month no interest program does that make sense, guys? And it, otherwise, and otherwise, the the number that's at the bottom of my page for uh, a, a price or a monthly investment um, is what is a monthly investment, right? Go ahead, Don. Yeah. yeah, and you really don't have to have a no interest plan no. there. Um, you, sometimes you can just present it. It was is so you'll have the money then. Okay, you'll pay. 120 and, and that ten thousand dollar example you'll pay 125 dollars a month and the difference when you get that in six months could you handle the 125 for the next six months yeah and then but, maybe maybe not it, you know let's at least ask before we give away a plan that's more expensive now exactly you don't don't yeah. negotiate against yourselves guys right yeah. i stopped right. giving no interest uh quotes away in 2008 don when when the true same as cash is basically disappeared and turned into like deferred interest. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's been that long since I've led with a no interest program. Guys, you're not selling furniture or betting. Okay. <laughs> so you don't have to be like a, you know, a sleazy, slimy sales guy that's trying to pitch financing options, right? Just right. listen to your client and then make the choice for them on what plan they should have. Who's better? Um, qualified Don to make that choice myself or the client based on the questions I asked them. So I'm right. not going to give them anything else to confuse them or, or exactly. stop my deal. Right. I looked at um, picking some plans for, for um, a company yesterday and worked through it. And I, interesting enough, I picked us a, a 10.99 plan, 1.75 payment factor. Yep. They also had a 9.99 plan with a 1.25 payment factor. That'd be my baby right there. And I, I there was a 7.99, but it put the payment factor back to 175. Now, I picked the 10.99, 175, yep. because it also was half the fees of the 9.9. .9. So I Amen. wanted the 9.9 .9 with that low factor when I need it. But I'm right. going to lead with a 1.75 payment factor. So, yep. um, and what I would tell guys to do is use a 2% payment factor in your head. $10,000, 2% payment is $200, right? If you want to know how to do that, it's $5,800. Let's just say there's a weird number. Move the decimal point twice, that's $58. Well, that's 1%. I can, t I can double $58 in my head easier than I can multiply 2% times 5,800. Yeah. So I move the decimal point twice, $58. I double it. What is that? $116. Well, that's 2%. I know my payment factor is only going to be 1.75. So it's going to actually be a little lower, but yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to talk the, the 116. And then when they, when it comes back, I'm going to congratulate them that they, man, their credit, must be better than than mine or some that I see out there because they actually said yours will be a little lower than I thought. If you can convince them to do 116 and the payment comes in at 98, you think they're going to say, well, no, no, you promised me 116. Oh, I they're going to be $98. so happy. Yeah, they're going to gonna be. But if you promise them $98 and, and it comes in at 99, wait a minute, you're changing the numbers on me. You don't want any, any time for it to go up 
you want it to go down in their mind. Psychologically, they'll feel better about it. So I like the 2% off the top of your head estimate because I know the 1.75 is going to come in just a little stronger, a little lower for them, a little better yeah. feeling, a little more comfort. So um, the three others I picked was a six-month no interest, no payment, a 12-month no interest with payment, and then for this company, I picked a 0% for 25 months so they, so that if they needed to have that, it was in their arsenal. But I don't want them to lead with it. It's just in the background. They had to pick six, and they're stuck with those six for a little while. Once they choose that, they can't flip them on and off. So I said, let's get one just in case a com- somebody, that 1% of the population comes in and says, I can't do it in six months, but I would be able to pay it off in two years. Boom. I've got that choice for them. Um, and it really was not that bad. Um, it's still a little higher than I want to pay as an owner, previous owner, manager. I want to pay zero. I want to pay nothing more than I would have paid in my credit card. But the interest market right now has gotten to be where it's just a little bit higher than, than that. But h- how close can we stay? I don't want to give up half the company's profit just to the finance company for them to do nothing. They're going to yeah. basically do nothing. They're not going to help install the equipment. They're not going to take the phone calls from the client when they're upset. They're not going to honor the warranties for the next year or 10 years or whatever. They're not going to have to deal with, you know, a bad review or asking for positive review. And the finance company moment, just gets that money for free. At any moment, that company could also come to you and just stop doing business with you as a finance company. We've all wow. seen this happen, right? I, yeah. I've had it happen to me where one day I walked in and Wells Fargo says, you're not a, our type of customer. I'm like, Are you I, had, I got uh, shut down by Wells Fargo. They said too many of our clients were defaulting. Well, you're the ones who approved them. We didn't, yeah. you know, we, we weren't doing anything. All we did was send them. You were our primary. You approved them, but yet you sit, you cut us off because they were not we're, paying. It's 2008, seeing. 2009 when there were a lot of defaults. But how is that us? But they'll they'll do that to you. We're seeing this a lot today with credit card processors. Um, I've actually even been dealing with it lately because they say that we're a higher risk business, right? Mm. And I'll, I'll have 120 grand that runs through the, the bank account in a day or two. And then the, they want to hold my money for 120 days. I mean, it's these financial institutions do not have your best interest in mind. They have the, the system is rigged against us and it's rigged for them. You give them a dollar, they can loan nine or 10 out against that dollar. <laughs> so, yeah. So um, if your company lets you use any and doesn't charge you anything, meaning if you're a technician, you use any of these, you make the same commission, doesn't matter what, pick the one with the lowest payment factor. That's the one you should go to. And then let the customer try to change you rather than you trying to convince them of something. If they say, well, you know, do you have a, you have a ability, ability to pay uh, a no interest in six months or whatever they might say, and it's, don't say yes. Say, well, if I could get that for you, would you would you want to move ahead with this project today? Make them commit before you give your cards. It's it's like yeah, man, let me see if poker. I can get it done. Yeah, it, you knowing in the back of your mind you can do it, but let them say what they're willing to do. Well, if, if I could get that for you, or would you want to <laughs> go ahead with the whole project, or you are you just thinking about doing part of it? I'm going to give you guys I'm going to give you guys one more thing too, okay? Something something that's going to help you so that you're not necessarily negotiating against yourself. You don't ever want to negotiate against yourself, all right? So if somebody's pushing you for a better financing plan, why not get something in return? Cuz if you don't get something in return, can the appearance be that you just weren't giving them a good enough deal up front? Yeah. So if somebody says, "Hey, you know, can can you can you go 24 months on that or 12 months on that?" I might say, you know, I can't give you something for nothing, but what would be of value to me is X, Y, Z. After the job's done, if you would leave us two reviews on one on Facebook, one on Google, and just tell the truth about what it was like to do business with us. There there are a lot of different things that you can trade for giving them because essentially you're giving them a better price. You are giving them a price reduction because the finance company is going to charge you that price reduction or that, that discount. 
course, the one I liked was the install discount the best. Take the slot yeah. on our schedule that keeps my guys busy, which happens to be usually this afternoon or tomorrow, really soon. I, I want to yeah. take people that say, well, I want to do that, and I'll call you in the spring, and we'll do that. No, you know, wait a minute. That really doesn't help me as a business to to have all these future promises that may or may not come through. But if I could get you that discount, would you be willing to go ahead with this project tomorrow? You know, and then take that scheduling. Dis now, scheduling discount is worth it for me so that our guys can stay busy all week. Keep us from having to pay them a salary for doing nothing. If I could do that, would you go ahead with the project? So scheduling discount is my favorite, but I do like the reviews and I do love uh, yard signs. And I, you know, I like them being available if somebody like wants to evaluate us as a company or, you know, water fill, especially a water filtration. You know, if somebody says, you know, one of my future clients says, well, do you have anybody I could talk to? I really want to have a few water filtration clients who can say, gosh, that makes such a difference. You know, I could taste the difference almost immediately. Uh, so those are those are very nice to have. But I love the scheduling discount because I want to do the work now more than I want promises in the future. Right. So, G Guys, I uh, hope that you've enjoyed the show today. Wanted to let you know something real quick before we get out of here, and that is that the next training events are going to be in Orlando in December at the Grand Hollow Man Mansion. All right. The technicians sales class, the ultimate black belt sales training event is going to be the first through the fifth. It's rolling across the bottom of your screen right now. You're going to check in on the first, which is a Sunday. Checkout is Thursday um, which, uh, is the fifth. All right. So the first and fifth are your travel days. You're going to fly into Orlando international airport and take about a 35 minute Uber ride over to the mansion. Once you get there, you won't need to leave. You won't need anything. Your lodging, your tickets, your food, your beverages, everything is all included. Okay. So if you need information on that, shoot me a text at 239-848-6533. That's 239-848-6533. If you're watching this on a replay, throw a replay in the comments for me. If you're watching on a live, please throw live. Guys, appreciate you showing up and joining us today. Um, until next time, guys, go out there and slay some dragons. Thanks for joining me today, Don. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you, Gene. Good luck, guys. See you guys. And